So we're going to look at how we can add some influences to this simulation um, to add a bit more dynamic movement to it. Um, if we look at my previous sim, you can see it's quite turbulent and sort of really rolling upwards. Um, if we compare that to my play blast from our last video, you can see at the moment it's still quite slow and there's not much sort of aggressive movement in it that we would like. Um, and we can make this more like this by adding some influences. Um, so, let's go back to Maya. Um, I've got a compound I've made that's got all of the influences in it. We should have a look inside. Um, so I've just put them all in here rather than having to tab them all out. Um, so, we've got quite a lot of them. There's, what is that, 15 of them? Um, and you can sort of daisy chain all these together and you know make more complicated sort of influence objects. Um, a lot of them are sort of you know quite familiar if you've done any sort of dynamics, turbulence and wind and gravity and attract repulse and all that sort of drag and dissipation. Um, we're not going to go through all of them. Um, we're probably going to look at vorticity, this modulate one, which is very good, and also our probably have a little chat about dissipation. So this sort of rolling that we get, we, we get using the vorticity uh, influence. Um, so I'm just going to show you how we set that up. So I'll delete that, I don't need that now. So um, let's have a look here, where are we? Um, so we just want to go to R. There we go. So this is our influence port on our simulate arrow. I'm just going to tab and start typing vorticity. Get that. And as you can see, there's not many settings. Um, basically, you've got it on and off, and you've got the amount you want to apply. And we've got a scale. Um, I think what the scale does is. Uh, if you remember the early video when we were talking about voxel size and how the scene gets uh, voxels created at larger scales all the way through the whole of the world. Um, if you scale this up, it will take into consideration those larger cubes and it will scale up the vorticity to sort of match them. So small, big, 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 big. big. Um, so anyway, that's what I get from reading the... Um, this, which says, uh, this is the degree to which the vorticity value is scaled up adaptively to adaptively larger vo voxels in aero simulations. That's what I sort of take from that. Um, so we're just going to plug it in, our influence into the influences of the aero. Like that, and I'll have a little think. Pause. I'm getting there yet. I think sometimes when you're, because I'm at the end of the cache here at frame 90, because that's quite a large cache frame, I think it's about 4 gig, it's um, sometimes take a bit longer to sort of re. Uh, Evaluate the whole graph, so you I mean you can you know pause, which will make life a bit quicker. Um, so you can add more than one, like all these. If they've got these little dots next to them, you can add more and more. So you can have loads of fuel sources going in there, and loads of you know influences and loads of colliders. Um, you can sort of open them out like that. Um, so I've got that. I'm going to leave that at one, um, and I'm just going to sim that out and then do a play blast. So I'll rewind and pause, resume, and pause. Yep, there we go. Make sure I'm at right. I'm going to read at the moment, turn that to right. And I'm going to hit play. And I'll pause and come back. So I've simmed out the first uh, 80 frames of that. And uh, I've done a play blast here. Uh, so this was the version before we added vorticity 
and then we've got this one here which is a bit shorter but as you can see we're already getting a lot more of this rolling especially when it gets higher it sort of rolls a bit here but then at the top it sort of wafts along um, which is good um, so one of the things that you've got to look out for when using the vorticity influence is that as it goes through the simulation it will sort of add vorticities on vorticities on vorticities as it were and you'll end up with quite noisy especially in the smoke at the top um, but Bifrost has got a cool way of sorting this and you know stopping this happening so you can basically use another influence called a modulate let's close these down um, so we've got our velocity influence there if I do mod emulate, and what this does, it lets you use uh, one of the parameters of the simulation by default, it's set to fog density, um, and you can use that to then modulate another uh, influence. So, how that works is I'm going to use temperature. So, temperature. Um, and oops, I've just got inside the graph. Um, and if I look at my temperature at the moment, I've got it set to 400 and 800. Um, so what I'm going to say is, uh, I'm going to put say let's do 600, and I'm going to do let's just say 4 or 50. So what this means is that um, any temperature above 600 and above will get the full influence of the vorticity on it and then anything below 450 will get no uh, vorticity applied to it and everything will in between will be you know a zero to one um, you know fall off from whatever is written in here so just plug that in from the out influence of that into that um, and just looking at my which one is it is it that one um, no it's this one isn't it um, no it's this one All right. right so um, I might even just crank up my vorticity to maybe two just get some more sort of rolling in there um, so maybe just click on that if it lets me got inside it by mistake um, so just back to two and though I'm not going to use it here uh, I just sort of quickly chat about the dissipation influence um, I've got a sim here I did earlier which I use the dissipation on the temperature and you can see it burns out quite quickly and you get these sort of weird little flecks which are quite nice in a way but they weren't exactly what I wanted when I was doing that um, so it can be quite good but it's also quite handy I've noticed for keeping some of your um, your file cache sizes down so though I don't sim it that far through here but if you've got an explosion especially the one that's not continuous like I've got in the current sim that stops um, when this smoke sort of gets thinner and thinner and gets more and more transparent and in fact is almost you know invisible to the eye um, it's still being cached out of quite and using quite a lot of uh, file size sort of res because even though it's very transparent it's you know all that high detail sim is all up here and stuff and you can end up with very big file sizes even though visually on the screen there's not much going on um, and the dissipation influence can help sort of control that um, if you just pl plug it in it's set to fog density by default um, and if you just you know uh, let's minimize, bring this down a bit um, so you can just drag that into an influence like that and you've got that um, I've got it on pause so nothing's going to happen um, and that can help keep your file sizes down in your cache especially when you know it's up here and it's all gone a bit transparent it's all well hopefully it dissipated by then and the res will get smaller um, if you do want to use it on the temperature one thing to take into consideration uh, temp 
Project, is that you need to set this background value to 20 or whatever your ambient temperature here in your aero solver settings is. Um, if you don't do that, it's going to basically dissipate the temperature in the whole scene, including the ambient value. Um, and this just sort of gives you a base, so you don't dissipate anything underneath that. Um, yep, yeah, so just a quick look at the dissipation influence there. Um, I'm going to sim this out now with the modulated vorticity. Um, and in the next video, we'll start tweaking the settings and seeing how we can change the sim.